I, in, in terms of, you know, what, what the art form is like or how it relates to, to other art forms, I, I, to me, it's kind of its own thing. You know, it's, 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 it definitely has a different appeal to me than reading a book does. Uh, and you know, I'm, I'm, my my literature level is you know genre fiction pretty much so i'm i'm not the, probably not the right person to be talking to about the art form side of it um but uh uh you know i i, I think in, i the 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 things that i think more about in terms of of what would elevate it is not so much the content you know i i i think if you look at the comps you see a lot of people trying self-consciously to be artistic and I, I'm not sure that's really the thing that, that'll elevate it to the next level. I, 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 I tend to think that the, you know, if, if there is another level for it to go to, it's probably more a technology kind of thing. And that's probably just my bias that I'm, you know, I'm kind of a programmer by nature. Um, but I, I guess what I'm, what I'm getting at is that, you know, I, I think, I think that, that to me, the, the ideal would be, would be more interactivity and more, more convincing characters in the game more more freedom of action uh, more real more realism you know more simulational realism and so th those are the things that i think would elevate it because I, I i think that i think that what you have now is you know a really interesting simulation of an ideal that we all have in mind for what for what these things ought to be like and it's it's not we, we haven't ever really built the ideal <laughs> kind of game. Uh, we, we haven't really built what we all have in mind as, as the ideal of this kind of game, I guess. And I'm not sure we all have the same idea in mind, but I, I think that I, I get the impression that there's a lot of shared shared mental image of, of what, you know, kind of what the ideal uh, for, for these sorts of games ought to be like. And, you know, I, I, I really think that to me, at least, what what you'd really like is is sort of the Turing test, something that passes the Turing test. You know, you want to have, you want to be having a conversation with a computer, where it could just as well be a conversation with a person running the other side of the game. Yeah, yeah. The, no, the development system was was an iterative process <laughs> that that came out of uh, uh, a bunch of early attempts to make you know just kind of custom one-off games. And you know, I made a bunch of a bunch of custom one-off games when I was probably fourteen or fifteen, something like that. And as I started, you know, as I as I wrote a couple of them, I started realizing, well, this would be a lot easier if I had a couple of particular ways of uh, uh, extracting out some of the the common elements, you know. Um, and it was it was just this 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 sort of I, I I just kind of did it over and over, and it took a while to kind of get it right, um, and eventually I figured out that what, what you really needed was a custom programming language for it. You know, my early attempts were more things where you, I'd say, well, okay, what, what you want is a program that can handle a list of uh, room descriptions, object descriptions, you know, and you, you sort of have all these little custom slots where you put your text in. Um, and uh, but there'd always be like, you know, one little exception. So you'd, you'd need... <clears throat> It wasn't good enough just to have a list of rooms. You needed to have a list of rooms, but this particular room, you needed to have some little extra code attached to it. And then this other room, you needed to have something if you if you went south there. And then this other thing, you needed to have something if you you know opened it at the wrong time. You know, all, all so you had all these little exceptional conditions that you couldn't handle with a simple list of data. You know, a list of text. And so I'd, that's that's kind of what led me into this this programming environment uh, idea. It was just that you know you you needed you needed you needed to have common data, but also uh, you needed to be able to write exception code. It was purely for my own needs at first. The uh, my my early attempts at this were just just entirely trying to simplify my own my own work, uh, trying to create these games. That that was that was somewhere around 1990. Um, that the, you know the first thing that I really called tads was uh, probably. 88, 89, somewhere in there. Oh, yeah, there, there were many, uh, uh, many situations, especially when I started doing the, uh, when I started putting the uh, multimedia stuff in. Um, that, that's when it, it really got, uh, when people really started kind of uh, coming up with creative ways to use it. Um, uh, you know, there were a couple of people that did, uh, for example, um, uh, that took it and, and wrote RPG games. Uh, you know, just uh, by which I mean the little the the role playing style of game where you have a, a sort of a grid of uh, locations, 
and you walk your you walk a little character icon around a grid on the screen, and so no text at all. It, you know, just just purely a purely graphical game with this thing that was designed <laughs> designed to be a text system. Uh, for for some reason, people who are interested in text adventures are pretty much two a one interested in writing systems for text adventures. Uh, and if you you know if you follow the news groups or or the mud or anything, practically everybody. Uh, you know, maybe not everybody, but a, a goodly percentage of people show up and they say, I'm, I, you know, I think text adventures are great and I have this great idea for a brand new text adventure system. And so there, there's probably been, you know, like a hundred of these things attempted over the years and there's, you know, four or five that have actually gone anywhere. And I think, I, I really don't think there's any like one catch that stops people from, from making progress at them. I think it's more just that there's a lot of little pieces that you have to pull together and, and kind of make all work. Well, there, there's a significant, I, sorry to digress for a second, but there's, there's a significant bunch of people who work in a couple of, uh, of rather different systems. There's, there's a drift, if you've heard of that. Oh, yes, a drift. And there's, there's, a, there's a pretty good, and, and the, the thing is that that community is, is actually pretty separate from, from the group of people that uses Hugo and Form Tads. Uh, Alan is probably still in there. Um, uh, but I, I get the impression there's a pretty big user base of people using Adrift, and they just we just don't talk to each other. The, these these two groups of people. Uh, the you know the, the first the first inklings of that were were back in the you know the early '90s when we had when we had Tads as this sort of shareware semi-commercial uh, venture, and uh, we had a fairly we we ran a BBS, um, and. So we had a we had a, a little community that that formed around the BBS, and we we also corresponded with people by paper mail, if you can believe it. It was, <laughs> uh, but it was, uh, uh, yeah. We we had a you know a fairly a fairly devoted little group of people that were interested in it, and that you know we'd communicate with regularly. That were actively working on games. Uh, we we had we had a few people that that we had sort of side ventures with. Uh, who were writing games that they they were selling commercially or shareware products, and so they wanted to kind of, you know, get involved in our uh, our little our little uh, business venture. It it it, it uh, we we actually when we started out it, it was interesting when we started out we were we were right at the uh, my uh, I, I was working with another guy named uh, Steve McAdams at the time, and we had we had this little business venture running called High Energy Software, and when we started out we. It was this was 1992, I think, and it was it was right on the cusp of that transition in the commercial uh, uh, game business. the The commercial game business had kind of discovered graphics, <laughs> and they it it was it was one of these things. Uh, it, it, we'd we'd go to we went to a couple of computer game conferences. You know, we'd we'd talk to people and we'd tell them a little bit about what we were doing, and. Everyone we talked to, you know, they'd, we'd, we'd get these kind of stunned, blank stares. They'd say, "Text adventures? What? What does that have to do with commercial games anymore? That was two years ago." <laughs> you know, it was like they they they. Uh -oh. that, uh, I can just I'll just let that. You probably want to right. So you know, we'd go to these conferences. We'd, we'd go to the Computer Game Developers Conference, which was a very, a very hokey affair at the time. It was, you know, now it's now it's like an actual industry conference. But back then, it was a you know a bunch of people in a rented hotel suite. It wasn't quite a hotel suite. It was a you know they'd they'd actually get a meeting room, uh, but it was it was a pretty small affair. Um, uh, but you know they 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 just kind of gave us the blank stares when we talked about text adventures. But uh, and so we you know we pretty quickly realized that. You know, it wasn't it wasn't really a commercial a commercially viable venture, and so we we were thinking our our real intention at the time was that we'd take our our development tools. We you know we figured we had some value in having some programming tools and 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 so forth, and we were going to uh, take the text sort of the text front end off and build development tools for more for other styles of games. We, we were thinking of, of building, uh, I guess, what you'd now call two D adventures, and uh, uh, RPG games as well, um, and we figured that we had a good system that would that would let people build their own games if they were interested. Um, and you know, we figured we we figured that that we didn't have the manpower with just a couple of guys working on this to really do much in terms of of actually writing commercial text or, or I'm sorry, commercial graphical adventure games because even at the time, you know, the amount of the amount of work involved in creating those is is pretty much all in the graphics. 
and you have to produce quite a lot of graphics to produce any kind of reasonable reasonable competitive game. Um, but we figured that you know there are probably people interested in writing their own games or or at least expanding existing games, and that we might be able to uh, to solve the system. Uh, and so we kind of headed down that direction for for a little while, and you know who knows we might have made something of it, but other things came up that you know were, were sort of more business software oriented and and we're not we're not entrepreneurial opportunities but we're just kind of good corporate employment and so uh, that that's what kind of sidetracked that and uh it was you know at that point it kind of became uh, uninteresting to try to pursue it as a commercial venture but i was still interested in it just kind of as a hobbyist and so i i kept tads going uh uh as, as just kind of, I changed it into freeware, you know, started making the source available and, and uh, continued on from there. It was, it was really pretty much business as usual. I mean, the, the, the transition was, took a while because we, we kept the, we kept taking orders uh, for a little while after we, uh, after we kind of decided not to pursue it too, too actively anymore. Um, and we, you know, we, we had kind of a steady, a steady trickle of orders throughout the whole whole time we were working on this and at some point it just you know it, it was it was like you said it was just it was just not worth the effort after a while and so we decided we'd just give it away um and and we also had a, had a lot of a lot of people who were interested in getting their hands on the source for porting purposes and uh, probably the you know so I, it, I i guess the transition it was kind of the opposite of what what you were suggesting in terms of the uh uh the, the amount of pressure or, or the amount of uh, uh, support questions that we were getting. The, the support questions actually dropped off <laughs> once we made it free because a lot of the support questions were, could you please give me the source? <laughs> and once, once we gave the source away, you know, okay, great. <laughs> it's a, I, I think it's a really interesting approach that he's taking with it. And, you know, obviously a lot of people, I, I, if you've been following the news group and so forth, a lot of people have, have definitely had a lot of interest in it. And it'll, it'll be interesting to see... Uh, uh, in, in the competition this year, and, and just kind of over the over the time ahead, how it actually gets uptaken in terms of uh, uh, people uh, developing games with it. Um, but the 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 really brilliant thing about Inform Seven to me is that if you look at the community right now, the uh, the number of people who play these games and the number of people who write these games is pretty much one to one. You know, pretty much everybody who's interested in playing them is also interested in writing them. And you know, maybe that's not strictly true, but it's it's the impression you get if you if you hang out in the news group and and so forth. And I so you know, I have I have the impression that there's probably a, a wider group of people that plays these games. Maybe they find one, they play one, and then they you know they move on. So that you know, I wouldn't call them enthusiasts. They're just kind of people who come along and you know find one game interesting. But in, in terms of the real the real enthusiasts, it seems like everybody who's who's interested in, in playing them is interested in writing them. Um, and you know the thing that that Inform Seven does, which is kind of neat, is it makes the the writing experience <laughs> rather similar to the playing experience. Uh, and so if you know if if your audience is mostly people who write these games, <laughs> it's it's uh, it's really the perfect thing. Yeah, we we had a couple of inquiries about that. Uh, I, you know, I really don't remember much about the specifics about it. I, it was my recollection is that they were uh, everyone we talked to about that was was sort of a an entrepreneur who had a startup idea, and they you know they were gonna they were gonna do something innovative with text adventures. You know, they were gonna use them in an educational product, or they were going to. Um, well, I can't remember any other. I, I remember there was one guy who had some educational idea about it. Uh, there, there was actually one guy who, uh, I don't know, five years ago had an idea of putting, uh, text adventures on cell phones and he wanted to get a bunch of, a bunch of catalog games from, from Tads and, and Inform and the other guys. And, uh, I, I think, I, I think they kind of changed their mind on what the right kind of game to build for their devices was, but, uh, and that, that's kind of what happened in each of these cases. It just, they just, they, they kind of looked at it, you know, they, they got interested for a while, but it sort of fizzled out after they looked a little closer, I think. Oh, there've been many. I, I've, I've, I've played a bunch of them through, um, uh, you know, one of, one of the first, I think that, that was like a really professional quality, uh, game that somebody wrote with Tads was something called the Uncoolian series, uh, which was, uh, by, uh, Dave Baggett, Chris Nebel, and uh, a couple of other guys. And uh, uh, and I probably shouldn't have mentioned anyone's name because they'll 
the ones I'm leaving out will <laughs> will get upset. Uh, but uh, uh, no, and those those were really good. You know, they were they were they were they were basically sl slightly modernized Zorks with with sort of a different twisted sense of humor. Uh, and there have been, you know, there have been a bunch over the years that have been really good. Yeah, yeah. No, we we try to explain it. I I I would say that, you know, I, I I'm not sure that that it really matters that we try uh, ultimately because I I do think that the people who use this are people who already know what they are. Um, but you know, we we try to explain them, and I I guess I've never come up with an easy explanation. Usually, what I what I do is I liken it to. Uh, uh, live role playing games because I think I think most people have a basic understanding of what what Dungeons and Dragons or something like that is like you know or what the basic idea is and so I you know I liken it to that where the game is moderated by a computer and where there's not as much throwing of dice and, <laughs> and statistics and and so forth uh, and that's that seems I I don't know I I don't know how successful that explanation is. <laughs> Because I think you know, I do think that ultimately, it's pretty much everyone who uses the system probably already knew what a text adventure was. I, I'm not sure how to answer. It. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, I think I think that I've got an ideal in my mind of what makes a good game, um, and I think I think the things that that have driven the development system for me have have been probably more on the side of trying to make it easy for for the the author to get the effect they're they're trying to go for more than what the game should be like uh because to a to a large extent i i you know we have we have we have a pretty good template in mind for the what what the game the look and feel of the game you know it's it's very simple in terms of the 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 high level stuff you know it's the, it's the teletype conversation basically um and so I, I think in terms of you know what what the game ought to be like, it's I don't know. I, I guess it's just kind of this nebulous idea that we've all got. <laughs> I wrote one competition game, and I think if I did it again, I'd probably enter it under a pseudonym. It didn't really occur to me at the time, uh, but I you know I, I I think that entering something in the competition, uh, it 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 probably biases it to have it uh, be written under a well-known name in the community. Uh, it by you know, and I, I, the bias probably averages out overall. <laughs> it's probably it's about the same number of people biased against it as, as toward it. But uh, but even so, you know, I, I, I think if you enter something in the competition, that that would probably be the time that, that I'd probably want to. I, I, I haven't really, I, I guess I haven't haven't really felt too much of a desire to do it. But I I guess uh, I've I've occasionally thought it would be interesting if someone wrote something that was kind of overtly political. And I think if I wrote something overtly political, I'd, I'd probably enter, probably write it under a pseudonym. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, it's it's interesting that in terms of you know social commentary and politics, uh, the kind of games that people write in this community don't really don't really get into that too much. <clears throat> you know, there, there's there's a lot of criticism of them. Uh, this is this is actually one of the one of the areas where there is some disagreement in the community. A little bit of politics, I guess. There's <clears throat> there's a little bit of of, of disagreement about them um, in the sense that they they tend to be this black hole that sucks all of the creativity <laughs> of the community every year into this one this this one time when everyone releases their games. And and it also <clears throat> tends to tends to create a certain kind of game because the competition has certain rules that. Particularly, that a game has to be two hours of play, uh, and so it, it it some people think it's it's a bad thing. I I I'm kind of I think that's kind of zero sum thinking, and I I tend to think that if we didn't have the competition as something that the community can accrete around, uh, we'd probably be a lot more scattered <laughs> and dissipated than we are, and so I, I think in that sense the competition is good. Um, I, th I think it would be it would be great to have something to counterbalance the competition that that w could have the same effect of you know being kind of a focus for people to to aim toward and you know kind of give them the the deadline and the motivation and and the exposure that the competition gives them and you know the reason that people tend to enter their games in the competition and I think I think it'd be great if if someone could come up with for example. Something that would uh, that would drive the development of a few long form games every year, 
or you know there's probably a couple of a couple of other things a couple of other sort of forms like that that it would be nice if there were more of um because i i have to i have to admit that i do miss the long games um the uh, the short games tend to have uh there you know a, a few really good games come out of the comp every year but there's there's just something different about the long games and the short games the the short games don't have that that way of involving you for a month and kind of an obsessive activity. <laughs> I, I imagine that, that pretty much everybody who's who's gotten into these games, you know, one of, one of the things that, one of the reasons they like them is that memory of playing something like Zork or one of the early Infocom games where, you know, you just, it was all you thought about for a month, you know, while you were working on this thing. Or, you know, in some, in some cases it would take you like a year to finish one of these uh, because, the, you know, there wasn't the internet for the instant hints and, and all of that. And so you actually had to sit down and bash your head against it yourself.